We're going to show you what a custom firmware PSP can do. It has some advantages over an official firmware PSP. Some of the advantages are you can have a special menu which will allow you to overclock your PSP, allow it to work faster. The disadvantage to that is it will drain your battery even more. You have the option to shut down or, rest or restart your PSP without having to use the power switch. Also, you have the ability to run homebrew programs, which are programs made by other people, not by Sony or any of their developers. We have a recovery flasher, which allows you to fix your PSP in the event you mess something up, and you don't have to send it off to Sony to have it fixed. You can run things like emulators. Like right here is a Super Nintendo emulator that lets you run Super Nintendo games on your PSP. You can also copy your PSP games to your PSP and run them without having to have the disc in the system as this game right here is. I'm thinking that's another PSP game. We also have another emulator. We have a, another emulator for Nintendo. And we have a Game Boy emulator. And then we have a PSP demo. We're assuming that you want to modify either a PSP 1000 or a PSP 2000 with custom firmware. The following tutorial will only work on a PSP 1000 or PSP 2000. You will need a you will need the following. There are a couple of differences. As you noticed, this is the PSP 1000. It is bigger and it has the spring-loaded drive. The PSP 2000 is also the same as the PSP 3000, except you'll have to look right here on your serial number. It'll say PSP 2001 or 2000 and then some random number. The following tutorial will only work on the 1000 or the 2000. You will need a Pandora's battery, which is a battery that's been modified to have a serial number which puts the PSP into service mode. You will also need a magic memory stick. It's just a memory stick with some special files on it which will install the custom firmware. And on a side note, there's two different kinds of batteries. There's the PSP, there's the battery that came with the PSP 1000, which is a big fat battery like this. This will work in both the PSP 1000 and the PSP 2000. There's the slim PSP battery, which is a lot smaller, that comes with the PSP 2000. Do not put this into your fat PSP. If you put it into the 1000, it will lock your battery out and you will not be able to use it for about three hours. You can put it in there to run the Pandora battery, but it cannot be in the PSP longer than 30 seconds. If it is in there longer than 30 seconds, it will lock your battery out and it will not even be recognized for three hours. We'll show you how to make a magic memory stick using your PSP instead of using the Windows method. You will need a PSP with firmware 6.35 or one of the listed firmware listed below. You will also need to download the pack from one of the links below. <clears throat> what you want to do first is make sure you're updated to one of the firmwares and use the tutorial and then use one of the homebrew enablers. We're going to be using firmware 6.35 for this tutorial. As you can see, we already have our PSP in USB mode plugged up to our PC. Inside the pack, you will find the following folders. You will need to go into your PSP. And you will need to go back into the pack and into the folder labeled Homebrew Enablers. We're using 6.35, so we go into that folder, we copy the folder labeled PSP and paste it onto our PSP. Then from here, we want to go into Firmwares, 500, and go all the way to the file that says eboot.pvp. We're going to copy that to the root of our PSP. 
Now after it's on the root, we need to rename it from eboot.pvp to 500.pvp. And then back on the pack, we need to go to Magic Memory Stick Creator and copy the folder labeled PSP Tool. On the PSP, we need to go into the folder labeled PSP, the folder labeled Game, and paste PSP Tool here. And then that should do it for our, our Magic Memory Stick. Now we go to our PSP and go under Game. You will see PSP Tool Genesis Edition Pro B Update 635 Pro B Fast Recovery and a Corrupt Data Folder. Do not worry about the corrupt data, you will not need it. Do not delete it though. Go to the one that says Pro B Update and run it. Once you get here, just push the X button, give it a few seconds, and then it'll say push X to start custom firmware. So just push X. It'll reload. From here, go under game, go to PSP tool, and run it. Go to Memory Stick Options and go down to Create Magic Memory Stick. You want the very bottom one that says 5.00 M33-4. So just push X on it. Once your little screen comes up, push Circle. And then just let it go through. Right, once it's done, it'll say, for the Magic Memory Stick to boot, you must have Time Machine's IPL injected to the Memory Stick. Just say yes. And then it'll say, hold the keys you wish to use to boot your Magic Memory Stick. Just hold the L button. Once it's done, it'll say, Magic Memory Stick has been created. And then that's how you create a Magic Memory Stick using your PSP. We're going to be showing you two different ways how to make a Pandora battery, which is used along with your Magic Memory Stick that you learned how to make from one of the other tutorials to install custom firmware on your PSP. As you can see, we have a PSP 1000, the big one. We have a fat PSP battery. This is an unmodded battery. And we have a PSP Slim battery, which is small. It is also unmodded. We have two more. We have a, another fat PSP battery. This has already been modded and is a Pandora battery. We have another slim PSP battery. This one is also modded and is a Pandora battery. There is two ways to make a Pandora battery. You can make a hardware mod or a software mod. We'll be showing you how to do both today. <clears throat> We're going to show you how to make the hardware mod Pandora battery. It can be done with either the fat PSP battery or a slim PSP battery. Both work the same. What you want to do is take like an extractor knife and cut around the edges of the battery. You want to cut the battery completely open and then take it apart. Be careful not to try and push in too hard or you can puncture the battery and it will ruin the battery. Once you have the battery open, you'll need to find a chip right here that is labeled IC04. There's, a, there's four pins on each side. You'll want to take your extractor knife or a solder iron and remove this pin right here. As you can see on this battery, it's already been removed. Once you break that pin off, make sure that it's not bridged with one of the other pins. But once you have this pin breaked off, it, it, it has become a Pandora battery. Just close the lid, 
tape your battery up, and that's a hardware modded PSP battery. The slim battery, there's a little difference because the circuit board is in a different place. Sometimes the circuit board's up here on the top, sometimes it's just a little board right here. It just depends on the battery. We'll have pictures posted showing the difference between the fat battery and the slim battery. We're going to show you how to make a soft modded battery. And on a side note, you can only use a PSP 1000 to make a soft modded battery. You'll have to have a PSP that can already run some type of homebrew, such as the Magic Memory Stick tutorial, whenever you use that to make your Magic Memory Stick. If you don't know how to run homebrew, just follow that tutorial. All the tools needed to make the battery are included with the Magic Memory Stick files. But you want to take your regular PSP battery and insert it into your PSP. And then turn your PSP on. You want to go under game into your memory stick. You should already know how to run the homebrew as was included in one of the previous tutorials. You'll want to find the program called PSP Tool and run it. Once PSP tool is run, go down to battery options and then select check battery serial. As you can see, it'll say battery mode, normal battery, and then it'll have a serial number. Just press circle. Go down to the bottom and it will say convert to service mode battery. Just press X. Now it'll say battery mode, service mode battery, and then it'll say battery serial is 0x followed by a bunch of Fs. Once that is done, you can turn your PSP off. And that is how you make a soft modded PSP Pandora battery.